welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Thank you for joining me for this special broadcast of the Concepts of Faith. My friend, Pastor Michelle Steele, and I recorded a series of programs on calling things that are not, and I want to share that with you today. What does it mean to call things that are not? Well, we will be exploring that during this program. In Romans 4, verse 17, the Apostle Paul says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Faith speaks what it does not see. It calls into existence that which it desires. What are you calling for? Are you calling for sickness? Or are you calling for health? Do you speak words of lack? Or are you speaking words of abundance? Well, you can learn how to change the circumstances of your life by calling for what does not exist. God called for light when all was darkness. And using those same principles, you can call the light of the Word into your life. Now, what if God had said during creation, it's dark, it's dark, it's dark out there, instead of light be. And what if Jesus had said, it's storming, it's storming, we're all going under. No. He said, peace, be still. He called for what was needed, peace. Jesus always established the end result with his words, and you can too. Now, I'm telling you, this is a powerful, powerful teaching, and I want you to pay close attention to the principles that we talk about today. Now, let's go to the programming in progress now. It is a privilege and an honor to have you here, and I want you to know I am super excited about this book, and I want to tell you why, first of all, because two reasons. First of all, one of the first cassette tapes I ever <laughs> believed God for the money to buy, the first one I ever got was Faith, Law of the New Covenant by wow. your dad, and then the second one was Calling Things That Are Not, and it had the picture of like a for sale sign yes. outside of a house on the cassette tapes. And my husband and I listen to that. We still have that cassette tapes. So I should have brought it with me today. And so to know that you had taken that teaching and put it into book form is so exciting to me. And I don't know if you've heard this before, but I want to share this with you as well. I remember hearing Gloria Copeland talk about when her and Brother Kenneth were $6 million behind in their television bill. And they were seeking God. They were doing everything they knew to try to figure out what they could do to change it. And she says, we went on a motorcycle trip over one weekend and we took that cassette tape of Charles Capps calling things that are not. And she said, we listened to that, that whole ride. And when we got home, we knew what to do. And that changed their circumstance because it, in, even though they knew it, it invigorated them to hear him preach it again. I'm sure they had listened to him minister that message many times, but they listened to that and it was one of the things that helped them come out of that $6 million deficit they had in their ministry. So thank you for putting this into a book form. And so we're gonna be talking about this revelation that is here in this book, Calling Things That Are Not. And so I want you to tell me a little bit about what you shared in the introduction of this book and how you were moved to make this into a mini book. Well, I was moved to make it into a mini book because We've been convinced for years that this message needed to be out in book form. Yes. I mean, it's, it's uh, on CDs, it's on MP3s, but it needed to be a book because you can carry these around. And the Lord had just really dealt with me that it needed to be out now, do it now. I said, but how am I gonna get this all together? And it just fell into place, every part of it fell into place, including the design of the cover, and the Lord really spoke to me that this book was so important 
that it would actually end up changing more lives eventually than some of the other books that we had out. Praise God. So I'm excited to share this book today because I believe that this message of calling things that are not as though they are is what every Christian needs to hear. Yes. Because they pray and pray and pray, God help me, God meet my needs, God pay my bills, please God help me, I'm behind. And yet when they pray, they're saying, I'm behind, I can't make, meet my bills. Every time I get ahead money-wise, something terrible happens and then I have to turn around and spend all my money and I just can't get ahead. So, and so they repeat this to God. And like my dad said one time, God spoke to him when he was doing that and said, are you praying or complaining? <laughs> and he said, well, uh, uh, Lord, I guess I'm complaining. He said, well, I'd appreciate it if you quit telling me what the devil said. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's one so, of those moments that, that what a transparent moment, but how much that helps us to know yeah. that's not prayer, that's, that's complaining. Right. And, and so my dad, his life began to change as he started listening to the Spirit of God. And one of the ways it changed is his language began to change because he would say things, he was a farmer and he'd say, if I plant a cotton seed on that fence post with no soil, he said, there'll be a weed that'll come up and choke it out. That's how negative he was. Oh my. And so things just were not good. But when the Lord began to show him through the word that he was calling things as they were, which was bad. Yes. The more you call things bad, the more you call yourself sick, the more you call yourself in debt, the more you call yourself anxiety written, the more you call yourself nervous, then you're reinforcing what is. And the only way to change what is, is by speaking the word and calling for what does not already exist. Yes. So in other words, my dad, he had a lot of debt on the farm. Uh, and one day I was walking through the house. I share this in the front of the book. I was walking through the house and he said, Annette, come in here. I want to, I want you to be a witness to something. So I said, oh, okay. So I walked in and the whole kitchen table was piled with papers and official looking things had been stamped by the county clerk. And he said, I want you to be a witness to what I'm about to do. And I said, okay. And so he pointed his finger at the mortgages, the promissory notes, everything on that table was debt in his life. Wow. And he owed a lot of money, a wow. lot of money. He pointed his finger at it. He said, debt, mortgages, I call you paid in Jesus name. I call you paid in full, dematerialize, cease to exist. You're paid in full, in full for God meets all of my needs. And I, of course, talking about it, I tell it really very accurately in the book, but pretty much that's what he said. And then he just turned around, walked off. And I was left standing there and I'd seen him do some pretty weird things, but <laughs> I thought, well, okay. So I guess that's done. And you know, that's what he did. He walked off. It didn't look immediately, things didn't happen, but through a series of circumstances, he was able to sell some land, pay off other notes, and God just began to show him step by step how he could pay those debts off. And God moved in supernatural ways to number one, give him wisdom, yes. and number two, to move, and I believe it was angelic involvement, to move and to get things flowing so that all of those debts were paid off. Praise God. Now I learned later that one of the things that he had called paid off was a subdivision where he developed, uh, built a couple of houses and the Lord had um, dealt with him that it was time to sell that, to go full time in the ministry. And so he got to thinking about it, which is bad. <laughs> Once you've said it, let it stay said. Yes. He called those mortgages paid. He called what did not exist because they, that was debt. Yes but he called what did not exist. But then his mind began to turn and he started thinking, you know, what if, the what ifs. And so he just drove by those houses out in that subdivision one day. He rolled down the window and he yelled at them, ha, 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 you're sold. <laughs> he rolled the window up and drove off. <laughs> now, you know, if anybody was watching him, they might think that he'd 
you know, a brick short of a load, so to speak, but it worked. I and heard it, him say that the Lord told him, you can release your faith in laughter. Yes, and that's you what he did. You can release your faith in laughter. And when he didn't have anything else that he could do, he had already made the statement of faith. He'd already yes. made the declaration. And so his action of faith at that point was to go that's and right. to laugh. That's right. And release, and that was a release of that's his faith. The words are so important, what you say, but the, also your actions. If you speak success and paying off your debt and getting out of debt, if you speak wholeness to your body, but then you turn around and you act in a different manner, for instance, you know, you prepare to fail. Yes. Then you're counteracting what you're saying. Your actions should fall in line with what you're saying. And you're, what you're saying is God supplies all of my needs. God is meeting my needs. I call that debt paid in Jesus' name. And then what happens is you let your words stay said, you support it with your actions, but you don't turn aside to the right or the left. Oh, what if that didn't work? What if, what if it doesn't happen? You don't, you, those thoughts will come to your mind, but you have to just keep on going straight. Yes. From what you've said, let your words stay said. I'm gonna share a personal example of, of this. Calling things that are not, and I'm sure we'll get into it in more depth though, calling things that don't exist. Most people have GPSs now in their car or just a handheld GPS or in your phone. And if you want to go to a destination, you set that destination in there. Yes. And if that destination is Chicago, you put Chicago in there, you punch the button, say that's where I want to go, and you just follow that. Yes. You don't change it, keep changing that around. You just put it in there and you let it stay said, so to speak. Yes. So my husband and I were flying back from the West and we had stopped in Amarillo, Texas. We have a small plane and I was flying. We'd taken off, just taken off from Amarillo after checking the weather. And they said, oh yeah, it's gonna be fine. You know, there's little low clouds right here, but everything's gonna be okay. So this is the flight service station, you know from the FAA, so we took off and we got um, maybe 15 miles out of town and all of a sudden, we're flying VFR, which means we have to be able to see the ground. Mm -hmm. And so we're flying VFR and all of a sudden the clouds get lower and lower and lower all directions. Now, there were some tall towers, like television towers and different towers, you know, like about 2,000 feet. And so I couldn't go any lower. So my only option was to go in the clouds, to let to stay in the clouds. Now we're on visual flight rules. I called the flight service, they said, oh, it's, it only goes 10 miles, you know, of course what they didn't realize is we're about to go in the cloud. So I reach over and I say, well, it's better to stay in the clouds and stay away from the tower. So I punched the autopilot on mm -hmm. and that controlled the airplane in three dimensions. I didn't have to even touch it. It was now going to follow the GPS and go where I wanted it to go and it was being controlled by the autopilot. So I'd sat there and just kind of watched to see when it cleared up, when I could see the ground. Well, I wasn't paying attention to my husband. And I turned and I looked at him and he was completely soaked in perspiration. He was white <laughs> as a sheet. And I didn't have time to address it at the moment. But after we did come out, sun was shining, it was beautiful, not a cloud in the sky. And I looked at him and I said, Honey, what is the matter? And he said, I thought we were gonna die. And I said, why? He said, well, I was taught when I took flight training that a VFR pilot has exactly one, uh, 90 seconds before they lose control of the aircraft and, and hit the ground and lose it, you know, they're dead. <laughs> what he didn't know is that I'd set the GPS and I had put it on autopilot. Yes. And all I had to do was sit there and wait until the sun was shining. Yes. This is how faith works. When you're calling things that are not, you're putting that destination. Complete that is so good. Health. That is such a good. Complete health. Yes. Free from debt, free from anxiety, peace in your marriage. You're putting that in that GPS. And then you're leaving it up to God because what you say will come to pass if you believe it. Yes. Then you put it on autopilot and you just sit back. Things may look bad, the clouds may come in, 
It may be stormy. It may look awful. But you have said it. You have called it. Yes. Put it on autopilot and let God do the rest. It's like J. Iris did when he set the course. He said, if you will come and lay your hands on my daughter, she will live. She'll be whole and she will live. Yes. And then they came and they told him, forget it. Your daughter's already died. What are you doing here? Don't bother yes. the master. And Jesus said, leave it on autopilot. Yes, <laughs> Just put it set on the autopilot. autopilot and yes. stay with the course you've already set. That is a yes. perfect illustration. And your dad always emphasized in his teachings that these aren't things we're not, we're not, these aren't just positive confessions of things that we want that are not founded on the word. These are things that God has already promised us. We're taking the promises yes. and setting them as our GPS. That's right. As our destination, as our course. And we're calling things that God has already said belong to yes. us and that are ours. Healing for our body, uh, the, the, the well-being of our marriage, our salvation of our children, the, the financial stability of our lives. These are things that God has already said belong to us. Yes. And so what a great illustration. And, and your dad always emphasized as well, this is God's method. God chose this method. Yes. And that's why we choose this method. That's right. That we know from Romans chapter four that it says, God who calls those things which be not as though they were, which is the foundation yes. of this book. So yes. this is God's method. Yes. He calls those things that be not as though they were past tense. Yes. As though they already exist because they, al they do already exist. Yes. And this is the, the principle we really need to understand. And that is everything we see in the natural world, everything here in the studio, this book, this, these things were all created from the unseen realm. Yes. They were called forth from the realm that is not visible. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 tells us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Same. Yes. And then verse three, it says, by faith, we understand the words were, f the worlds were framed by the word of God. So they were framed by what? The word. The word of God. Can you see a word? Not unless it's written. It's a vibratory essence. The yes. word, you can't see that. It's a vibratory essence. The worlds were framed by the word of God so that those things that appear were not made by things that are visible. So everything in the visible realm was created by the invisible realm. Yes. And so therefore everything that is in the visible realm, the Bible says is temporal. It is subject to change. Everything you see in your life is subject to change. Yes. Everything. Sometimes in a split second, things in your life are subject to change. But the, the real important principle here, the spiritual principle is that we take our words, what you cannot see, we take our thoughts, our beliefs, our faith, and we direct it toward putting that, dialing that into that GPS, we're directing it, we put it in there, and then it becomes visibly manifest, just like this book did. Yes. And so, interestingly enough, can you believe it? The word worked and all of my dad's <laughs> debts were paid off. He confessed healing. He used to have a terrible uh, problem with this poison ivy. He began to confess and began to say it. One of the reasons you confess the word of God is because you want to get it in your heart so that you do believe it. Yes. Because the word of God says, if you believe that what you say comes to pass, then it will happen. If you don't believe it, then what are you doing? You're still saying it because you're putting it in your heart. Yes. So that then you believe it. And finally, he became so convinced by confessing the word in his body, he became so convinced he was healed of reacting to that poison ivy that he actually eventually was able to grab it and rip it off of a tree and it didn't affect him at all. I do not advise anybody to do that <laughs> unless you have confessed the word, but he became strong in it. That's why you have to speak, when you speak to 
your situation, if you have anxiety, a lot of people today are just overrun with anxiety and fear, and you speak peace. I call peace into my life. I call peace into the situation. I speak calmness. Yes. And you begin to quote the Word of God. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, abide under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Yes. That actually means I stake my claim in the secret place, in the tent of the Most High God. Well, if you're there, what can hurt you? That's right. You stake your claim there. I yes. put my claim there. That's where I dwell every day. And when you do these things and you say them and you believe them, you produce the energy of faith all the way around you. Yes. In your, in your entire personal space, in your house, in your workspace, because the Word of God is powerful. Call it, call it like you want it, not like it is. So the calling it is not negating the circumstance, it's calling for the thing that you want to be made manifest. That's right. And the, the calling is like if you wanted to, if you wanted the dog, you'd call the dog. If you want the cat, you'd call the cat. If you want the healing, call the healing. Instead of like you said at the beginning of the program, saying, Lord, I'm in trouble. Lord, I'm in debt. Lord, my finances are falling apart. And that in that prayer, they're establishing the end results in the negative direction. That's right. And the thing that's also important is that we're not denying what exists in the natural and saying, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. That's lying. Right, <laughs> you know? right. Uh, denying what exists, there's no power in that. There's power in the Word. Yes. See, in the realm of the Spirit, we are whole, we are healed, we are well, we are strong, we are powerful. Yes. That's what the Word of God teaches us. So where people get kind of messed up here is they say, yeah, but look, look at me, I'm not really healed. No, but in the realm of the Spirit you are, and if you can see yourself in the realm of the Spirit, what God provided, if you can see that, and you say, this sickness has no power over me, but the Word of God does. Yes. The Word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Therefore, I call wholeness to me. Yes. I call health to me. I'm not calling arthritis. I'm not calling these other things. I'm calling health. Yes. You can take the Word and change it. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about taking the Word of God, that things that He has promised us, the desire that He has for our life, and bringing them into manifestation through the process of faith. You know, maybe you're watching today and you are are not in a position where you've ever received Jesus as Lord. And all of the things that we're talking about today are available to the believer through our position in Christ. And I wanna give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord today because He's the one, He paid the price on Calvary. He died the death to free you so that you could have His life. He purchased and redeemed us through the shedding of His blood and the laying down of His life on Calvary. If you're watching me today, I just want you to open your heart and pray this with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I believe that Jesus died in my place. I believe that you raised him from the dead. And today, I ask Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And today, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you believe that God raised him from the dead and that you confess his lordship over your life, that you are saved. The salvation of Jesus Christ is a total life salvation. He'll change every area of your life, even making available to you these truths that we were talking about today, the ability to take the Word of God and change that impossible situation because with God, nothing shall be impossible, but for him that believes, all things shall be made possible. You can operate in the faith of God through the word in your heart and in your mouth. That's the plan that God has for you. I'm so glad that you tuned in today. Please watch us next week because Annette is going to be with us again next week and we're going to talk more about these things that God is re has revealed and it has put in this book, Calling Things That Are Not. Well, praise the Lord. 
I am so glad you were able to join us today for this program. This was such a wonderful time of sharing the truths from God's Word. I sincerely appreciate Pastor Michelle Steele for inviting me to be on her program. If you've been blessed by these programs, I hope you will let us know how your life was changed by writing, calling, or emailing. We really want to hear from you. Now, the book we discussed today is available by calling 877-396-9400 or visiting our website at caps.tv. We are offering this mini book, Calling Things That Are Not, and the companion book, Changing the Scene and Shaping the Unseen, for only $10 plus shipping and handling. Now, there's a complete audio teaching, which was recorded in a live meeting by my father, Charles Capps. It is also available for $15 plus shipping and handling. As for the two CDs, Calling Things That Are Not. You know, as I was editing this little book, the Holy Spirit caused me to realize just how much life-changing power is in this principle. God's Word is alive, active, full of power, if we just know how to act upon it. My dad humorously emphasized that no one would go out the door calling for the cat if they wanted the dog to come, and no one would go out the door and call for the dog if they wanted the cat to come. What are you calling for? Are you unhappy with what you have in your life right now? Are you continually calling things as they are? To change things, you must call for what does not currently exist. You change what is seen and shape the unseen by applying these principles, the principles of the Word. And this teaching will show you just how to do that. The two book package, Changing the Scene, and shaping the unseen, calling things that are not, is only $10 plus shipping and handling. And the 2CD audio teaching is 15 You can call now, 877-396-9400, or visit our website at caps.tv. You know, most of our books are also available in ebook format. And most all of our audio teachings are available in MP3 electronic format. Visit our store online at caps.tv. That's C-A-P-P-S dot TV. I hope you will join us next week as we continue to study God's Word and its life-changing power. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. God bless you. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.